As the reign of terror unleashed by unknown gunmen on the southeastern part of Nigeria gathers pace, killings and the destruction of property in the region have become the order of the day. Imo State in particular has become one of the worst hit states, despite efforts by the police and security services to restore law and order in Imo and neighboring states. This got to a head on Sunday when a former presidential aide and chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, Ahmed Gulak, was slain by unknown assailants close to Oweri, the Imo state capital. Gulak, who was once a member of the opposition People's Democratic Party and had worked for former president Goodluck Jonathan as his special advisor, political matters, had decamped to the ruling APC some years ago. As a member of the APC, he was appointed by the national executive of the party to chair its governorship primary in Imo State before the 2019 general election. It was through that primary that the incumbent governor of Imo, Hope Uzodima, emerged the governorship candidate of the APC. Now joining us from Abuja Studios to discuss the killing of Gulak at the weekend and rising insecurity in the southeast is Honorable Henry Waouba, a member of the PDP who represents Mbaitoli Ikeduru federal constituency of Imo State in the House of Representatives. Welcome to the program, Honorable Wawoba. Good morning. A very good morning to you in the studio. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, quickly, what's going on in the Southeast? It looks like the Southeast is under siege. Uh, INEC offices and facilities are no longer safe. Uh, persons are now being assassinated on the streets. Mimo to Ebonyi, to Enugu, to Anamra. Um, you, as a representative of a major constituency in Bitali, Keduro, a uh, federal constituency, what are your fears and what do you really think is going on there? Only yesterday, a visitor from the north, from Adamawa, uh, was assassinated on the streets of uh, Imo State. As we speak, uh, IPOM, the indigenous peoples of Baafra, has ordered a seat at home. Uh, for all persons in the entire Southeast. What's going on? And what do you think that Nigeria needs to do about this? Absolutely, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I would um, like to start by extending my condolence to all those who have lost their lives in the conflict since uh, this year, and in fact, from the beginning. Um, Obviously, we've lost a lot of people at home. Personally, I've lost a lot of my uh, constituents, um, innocent civilians, men in uniform. And just yesterday, Ahmed Gulak, who was in Imo, reportedly on the assignment of uh, assisting the Senate committee that was in Imo State to look at the constitution amendment that uh, is going on, and indeed, that is supposed to commence tomorrow by the House of Representatives. I think that the emerging security scenario in Nigeria is alarming. It calls for serious concern. There is absolutely no part of this country that one can say is insulated from one form of security challenge or the other. Um, in the southeast, we have seen it bubbling for a while. And I think it's coming to a head now. And um, I'm using this opportunity, having put out statements in the past, uh, having tried to organize uh, you know, stakeholder summits, security conferences, and all of that. Uh, there's a time when all of this bloodshed has to stop. I mean, it is senseless. There's absolutely, this is a, an ill wind that blows no one any good. Killing and counter-killing by security agencies in any part of the country that we see this or witness this kind of activity must be condemned. As a responsible leader, I am out here today to call for restraint, to call for calm, to call for this de-escalation of this violence. It's going on and today it's almost becoming a hydra-headed monster that nobody knows how it's going to emerge in the next second. As we're talking right now in the studio, I won't be surprised, unfortunately, to leave the studio and get a report that maybe students have been kidnapped in one part of Nigeria, or there has been banditry or criminality, or even activities in the Southeast that, uh, you know, the, the, the term that I really hate is the term unknown gunmen. 
And these things are emerging. These things are real. So I am here to call for de-escalation and to say, look, we need to talk. We need to reach out to ourselves. We need to ask questions. Properties are being destroyed in my federal constituency. Properties are being destroyed. National, critical national assets, such as the INEC office that was raised down in Injaba, in Imo State yesterday. The police station in my local government in Morubi during the NSAS was burnt down. Ditto for the police station in Oji, which has been rebuilt and reburnt down again. So we've entered a vicious cycle of insecurity. And I think government and all stakeholders need to really look at this issue devoid of all the things that hold us back, particularly religious sentiments, political sentiments, tribal sentiments, and say, look, what affects one Nigeria in any part of Nigeria affects all of us. We cannot say we're insulated. It's happening in the Northeast, or it's happening in the Southwest, or it's happening in the North Central. We are all tied and knitted together in this journey of nation building and nationhood. We need to address the issues. There are serious injustices, perceived injustices. People feel excluded. This is not the emo that we used to know. This is not the Southeast that we used to know. So I am calling for restraint. I think enough of the bloodshed. We need to stop all the killings on both sides and get back to the drawing table to know where we got it wrong. I'd like your views on exactly where that could be. And also, if you have any updates you want to share with us on the sit-at-home order issued by IPOB from Saturday at 6 p.m. to Monday at 6 p.m. with the threat of death to whoever flouts that order, such that a governor, the constituted authority of the state in Eboyin, had given an order that traders who do not open their shops on Monday will forfeit those shops in an attempt to counter-coerce the traders, but he has had to withdraw that threat. What exactly is going on? Is the sit-at-home order being obeyed, and what is its aim? Well, um, I lost connect uh, connectivity for a while, but I heard the last part about the, something about the sit-at-home order. I have been in touch with Emo State this morning to check what is going on. I can confirm from the reports that I have that Imo State is heavily militarized uh, for the past couple of days. Uh, people are afraid of the, the stray bullets that are flying around. Um, sometimes for fear of the unknown, uh, what will happen if you go out there minding your regular business? Uh, you don't know. Uh, from Ebony State, we got reports that the governor has uh, tried to deal with the issue by saying, look, if you're a shop owner and you don't open up your shop today, you, your, your shop licenses will be revoked and all of that. Unfortunately, I think it waits, uh, we will have to wait it out to know if there is a seat at home order being complied. But as at this morning, I cannot confirm because I haven't received enough intel on ground to know if uh, you know, it's been obeyed or not. But I can tell you that people are really, really afraid of getting out there and getting hit by a stray bullet. On that note, can you please hold your thoughts? We need to take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more with Honorable Mwawaba. Please stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. We're still with Honorable Mwawaba. Honorable, before the break, we were talking about the effect on the psyche of those in the southeast of the IPUB um, their home order. I wanted you to conclude on your thoughts before the next question. Right. Uh, unfortunately, um, I, it, it looks like the sit-at-home order may be having some uh, compliance, um, at least in email, because I've made some phone calls. Uh, certainly, people are concerned about coming out today, uh, of all days, uh, not the least being that they really want to comply with the IPOP directive, but also that the entire state is heavily militarized. Um, security forces have been deployed. And if anything were to happen, uh, certainly one wouldn't want to be caught in the crossfire of a stray bullet. Uh, but it's still early yet. I think uh, by the afternoon, 
we'll be able to make a, a, a good assessment uh, at the level of compliance of the seat at, at home order. All right, uh, Honorable, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news, but from the time we started the conversation to now, there's been another story of the kidnapping of, of, the kidnapping of a lawmaker somewhere out of Nasarawa State. I mean, just, just to allude to what you said at the start of the show, that probably before you end the show, you'll have heard uh, another bad story of a kidnapping somewhere. Um, but that's the sad reality of Nigeria today. Two things I'd like to talk to you about. Number one would be people are tying Ahmed Gulag's death to a political incident uh, of primaries, the last elections. They're calling names. They're calling a certain candidate, in lots of the former governor, the incumbent governor. Can you help us untangle all of this? Because you are from that state. And secondly, the police said they have killed you know, some IPOP members uh, that did attack uh, Ahmed Gulag uh, yesterday. And they said they are, the remaining ones they arrested, they'll bring them to justice. I mean, make sense of what is going on as regards all of that. Is there a political undertone to it? Well, certainly, um, I've, I've certainly heard um, most of these allegations, uh, rumors and counter-rumors. The only official statement that has come out has unfortunately been the one that we've received from the police. The, the first one that confirmed that he, he was actually assassinated. And of course, the second statement put out by the police that they had uh, killed those that uh, were part of the, the crime. I, I, I really think that at this point, we need to ask more questions. Uh, if we pour petrol, into an already charged uh, scenario. Obviously, we're just going to exacerbate and uh, escalate the issues. I would have wanted to see a thorough investigation in this matter. I would have wanted to ask, why was he traveling alone? Um, I got unconfirmed reports that he was a resource person uh, at the recently concluded Senate uh, uh, public, zona public hearing in Imo that uh, had to do with constitution amendment. But it would be nice to know if that position was true. We would like to know why he was in a vehicle by himself, going without security uh, in an already charged environment like Imo. Unfortunately, the police statement has also said they've killed those people that have uh, been identified as the criminals. It would have been nice to engage other security protocols that perhaps would capture some of these perpetrators so that we can get to the roots. Right now, um, everything is in the realm of speculations. And that is the danger because we're dealing with a security situation. Yes, Ahmed Gulak was indeed the person that came to conduct the APC primaries in Imo State. Um, it was under his... Uh, uh, arrangement that the current governor got his APC ticket. There's no doubt. Everybody knows this. But we, there's no need speculating and calling names without proper and thorough investigations. I think it's very dangerous. As responsible leaders, I think what we need to do now is to ensure that the police, if they can say that within hours they had tracked down the, the perpetrators of the murder, and killed them and eliminated them, we want to encourage them to engage in ways that will ensure that we have captives that we can interrogate, we, that we can have an investigation and find out who is, if, there's, if this is politically motivated now, if these people have been eliminated or killed, uh, albeit in a gunfight, we will not know. So uh, one thing is, if it is true that these are the perpetrators, we encourage the police to engage in protocols that would save lives. However, if they are criminals and in the process of gun battle, and this is the way they have met their Waterloo, then there's nothing. What, do we, what, what can I say? I mean, the police and okay. the, our security men need to be encouraged to discharge their duties in Nigeria to ensure our safety. That's the first uh, you know, the primary duty of, of police. But I, let me just I, say I, this. in my view. Imo State, Imo State is traditionally known to be one of the most peaceful states in the country. But not anymore. When Governor Emeke Hedoha held sway for several months, 
everything was in perfect alignment. There was absolutely no issues of insecurity because we had everything and everybody on the same page. How Imo State, that was a peace-loving state, a place known for relaxation, people have compared Imo State to the Las Vegas of Nigeria. The hospitality industry is thriving. Everybody is welcome. How we have degenerated to the level of insecurity that we're seeing today in Nigeria is what we need to find out. Yes, you are right. It Honorable, beats my imagination that's question. that my dear home, Imo, is now known and associated with such terror that leads to wanton destruction of lives and properties. Well, we have just about two minutes to go. And I hope, uh, you know, if you can uh, keep your response within that uh, time frame. Uh, earlier on this program, I said, look, I don't buy into the argument of the police that Gula killed himself by not asking for security escort. The bigger point that you made is that everybody should be able to move around freely without having to ask for security protection. That's a major challenge for the security agencies. So we will not, you know, uh, buy into the argument of the police giving excuses uh, about uh, security in Nigeria. But let me ask you quickly, it's about IPOP. What do you think of the activities of IPOP? Where do you stand on the secession agenda? I know many, uh, you know, Igbo uh, leaders uh, will, uh, will not publicly come and uh, criticize the uh, IPOP, but I hope you will not tell that lie. You will give us an honest opinion about IPOP and secession. I, I can, let me just quickly tell you that I am completely detribalized. I am a Nigerian holding a Nigerian passport, and I believe in the Nigerian story. I started my nursery school in Kano State, in Kano City, in a school called Gidan Makama, inside Berenin Kano. I speak Hausa, I speak Yoruba, and I speak uh, my native language, Igbo. I believe in Nigeria. I think that the Igbos are best served in a larger economy, in a larger market, in a one big Nigerian Federation. But I believe that people have felt injustice for too long. I believe that my people are calling for inclusiveness. I believe that the things that, that, that give rise to insecurity are things that we can see. And I think we should bold enough to speak frankly to ourselves. If I have a perception of injustice or being, of not being included, for instance, the last appointment of the chief of army staff, those are the kind of appointments that the president would have done that would have immediately doused the tensions in Nigeria. But he chose to tow the path that he told, and there you go. I believe that if an electoral process goes through and Nigerians have spoken and said, look, this is the person that we have voted to lead us, the courts should be able to go beyond the papers be, behind, uh, presented before them to also look at the other issues on ground that will make sure that governance is delivered. I think the case in Imo State is pitiable. I think it's pathetic. And I just am so heartbroken that my people are dying every day. Properties are, are, are being destroyed daily. What I am calling for is a dialogue. The House of Representatives just finished a security conference that looks at solutions. Nigeria has 91 million hectares, out of which 1.7 million hectares is an urban area. 88 million hectares are rural. So we need to go back to our rural areas and activate our local government systems like was done on that the, 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 in the past. We need to activate our forest rangers. We need to use intelligence. We need to know when people come in. We need to address the issues. There's no point asking me what is my stand on this when you have not asked me what do I think can be done to address some of the issues. I think we need to build an inclusive state. I believe it can be done. I believe in Nigeria. I believe we can unify this country. But I also think we need bold leaders and bold men that will stand up and speak up and call for justice when it should be done. Well, on that note, we'd like to thank you, Honorable Henry Mwabuba, and let's just pray that you shall be well with Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us on The Morning Show.